Options for putting OS on virtual server. Now that our virtual machine configuration is complete, it's time to turn it on and install the operating system. Each virtual machine needs its own unique OS installation, but once you have it set up, you can create multiple copies of it. The new virtual machine we created is like a physical computer with a blank hard disk. Before you can use it, you must partition and format the virtual disk and install an operating system. The operating system's installation program might handle the partitioning and formatting steps for you. Installing a guest operating system inside your virtual machine is essentially the same as installing it on a physical computer. There are four ways to put an operating system on our blank server. The first one is to install the operating system using the client device option, which basically means you insert the DVD into your local workstation DVD-ROM, and ESX Server maps that device to the VM in a way so that the VM can boot off that DVD media. The second one is to use the host device option, which could be useful if you have physical DVD-ROM in your ESX host. You can insert the DVD install media into the ESX host DVD-ROM and use that device to install the OS. The third option, called Data Store ISO, is when you use an ISO file that is already being uploaded on the ESX server local hard drive or a shared storage SAN. The last option is to use an ISO image located on your local workstation hard disk. So let's take a look at the CD installation options. I'm going to right click on my test server 1 and select Edit Settings. And then I'm going to highlight the CD DVD drive. And here are our first three options, Client Device, Host Device, or Data Store ISO file. And what this is, is how your CD-ROM drive on your virtual machine is going to look. So if we've got client device selected, it's actually going to read the CD-ROM that is in the client. And the client is the computer you're on right now. It's a desktop or laptop you're on. So it's actually going to mount that CD-ROM that's in your desktop or laptop. And in the next section, we're actually going to go over this and do this. Our next option is host device. And we can actually connect to the CD-ROM drive that's on our ESX server. So we can put a bootable CD into our ESX server and our virtual machine will connect to that device. And we want to normally select the option connect at power. If we don't do this, then our CD-ROM won't be mounted when the machine power is on and it won't boot from the CD-ROM. So you want to remember to check that if you use this option. And also you want to remember to remove the CD-ROM from your ESX server when you're done because if your ESX reboots, it's also going to boot from that CD. So the third option is the data store ISO file. And this is actually my favorite because you can actually mount an ISO file that is located on your ESX server. And this is definitely the fastest option because nothing is transferred over the network. Note that ISO images can be stored in either a VMFS data store or an NFS data store. Storing ISO images on a VMFS or NFS data store allows you to share the ISO images across multiple ESX servers as long as the data store is visible to the ESX server. When you connect to a client device, it's transferred over the network from your desktop CD-ROM, so you know it's not going to be very fast. The host device is going to be pretty fast, but it's still reading from a physical CD-ROM, and that's not as fast as reading from the hard drive on your ESX server. So this is your fastest way, and my favorite way of doing things. And when we do this, we actually browse. And this is on our ESX server, and I've got mine stored in slash ISO images. And we can actually highlight an ISO image, click OK, and select Connect at Power On, and it will automatically mount this ISO image, and we're gonna do this completely in another movie, because I wanna show you how to get the ISO images on your ESX server. In previous versions of ESX, you had to use special tools to do that, and if you're not familiar with Linux, that can be a little tricky. Fortunately, not anymore. So I'm going to cancel out. Then I'm gonna right click on it, and select Open Console. Now this is the first time we've actually looked at a console of our virtual server, and this is exactly the same as sitting down in front of your server with a monitor, keyboard, and mouse that is connected directly to it. And expand it out, and we can see it boot up, and it just takes a second to boot up. And notice it tries to find an IP address, and it's going to try to boot from a PXE server. So this is our fourth and final option as far as building a server from scratch. So if we have a PXE server, it will just boot automatically. But here it couldn't find one, so it says operating system not found. So in the next movies, we're going to go ahead and go through each step. Did you know that after watching our videos, you can sign up for a week of remote access to our VMware lab? It's custom built and allows you to actually practice on enterprise grade VMware servers and storage. VIAdmin.com 
provides a remote server environment or VMware practice lab composed of vSphere ready lab servers for class or individual use. You can sign up at www.viadmin.com for access to the lab. You get one dedicated server with lots of memory, plenty of network cards, co-training servers in a cluster, two shared SANLANs, management station, and a KVM controller to manage your server. Within the VMware lab, you can set up any scenario including multipathing, high availability, vMotion, fault tolerance, DRS, create 10, 15, or more virtual machines, and test all of the VMware advanced features. One more thing, we have an instructor-led vSphere training consisting of live mentoring, e-labs, and e-lectures all delivered online. The training offers the professional a specialized tutoring platform that isn't available elsewhere and includes a schedule that matches your particular needs, live one-to-one -one tuition with an instructor, various labs, and Q&A sessions, and the chance to master VMware virtual infrastructure on a real-life teaching environment. Our VMware virtual mentoring goes far beyond mere video teaching. With access to a live tutor, you'll be helped through the different labs and you'll have an opportunity to ask questions and learn even more. So if you're really looking to gain hands-on VMware experience, you've come to the right place. Sign up for VMware Lab, Self-Managed Access, or join one of our instructor-led trainings today. Thanks for watching. Oh, I forgot to mention, we have a special YouTube subscribers bonus. When you sign up for access to our VMware Lab, Send us your YouTube username and we'll give you an in-depth, easy to follow, step-by-step -step lab book with lots of exercises and over 200 pages of top quality training for free.